the debate over human origins has intensified, hitting the mainstream media like a tsunami. The debate is really about God, and whether or not our origins are explainable without him. Atheists such as Richard Dawkins are attempting to prove that science and belief in God are incompatible. But are they right? Wow, that's just the first paragraph and already they have made two monstrous lies. First off, no one sensible would ever waste their time trying to disprove the existence of something, which those who claim it exists also say that its existence cannot ever be proven. I'll let Richard Dawkins explain. The problem is that you're applying natural laws to God, whereas he claims to exist outside of them. Therefore, he does not necess necessitate a beginning, unlike matter, on the other hand, which, ne which necessitates a beginning. Well, isn't that just too easy? I mean, you, <laughs> you talk your way out of having to provide a rational argument by just decreeing by fiat that God... That, that God simply de declares himself outside matter and therefore doesn't need the same kind of, of argument as, as anything else. I mean, if you're convinced by that kind of thing, you're welcome. I challenge any creationist watching this to present a single article published in any scientific journal describing any evidence, attest, and recorded data attempting to either prove or disprove the existence of a god. Second, yes, there are debates about our origins, such as were the origins of organic molecules on Earth caused by ultraviolet light, electrical discharge, or delivery by chondrites, or the development of the nervous system in human embryos, or string theory versus E8. However, these are not debated in the mainstream media simply because the vast majority of viewers lack PhDs in biochemistry or quantum physics. This kind of discussion is usually left for the numerous scientific forums. Now, a creationist might argue that this is akin to our accusations that religious fanatics brainwash herds of uneducated sheep. This is inaccurate because scientific theories are only of value when they provide a tangible benefit. If the theory of evolution's validity was really being hotly debated, it would be useless its practical applications would be non-existent or questionable at best. Finally, to pull off such a conspiracy, every researcher at every university or other body of scientific investigation across the entire planet would have to secretly conspire to falsify every test result and piece of evidence to agree with each other. And we have seen that even the relatively small number of creationist groups can't even agree with each other. I cannot imagine anyone paranoid or ignorant enough to believe such an insane conspiracy theory could ever exist. Yeah. God for not existing! We hate God! Yeah. Oh, and they right. do all that stuff? Well, their premise is that the material world is all that exists. And if science has eliminated God as the source of all life, then the late materialist Stephen Jay Gould was correct in his view that, quote, human life is the result of a glorious evolutionary accident. Ah, the first quote mine. I could not find the original context of this Gould quote. I'm not even sure it exists. It would have been a lot simpler if the authors of this website would have been so kind as to provide their source. However, Steph Zula did find this similar quote. We have become, by the power of a glorious evolutionary accident called intelligence, the stewards of life's continuity on Earth. We do not ask for this role, but we cannot abjure it. We may not be suited to it, but here we are. I will save most of what I want to say about this quote for a video specifically dedicated to the use of quote mining. But I will say this, as far as I am aware, absolutely no one has ever received a PhD in materialism. But new insights into our universe belie such a simplistic view. Quantum mechanics has revealed that our material world is based upon an invisible world of subatomic particles that is totally non-material. Pause. What does that even mean? Totally non-material? What quantum physicists did they consult with when they wrote this article? What makes something qualify as being material? I am no quantum mechanics expert, but I'm pretty sure elementary particles, quarks, electrons, neutrinos, bosons, etc. exist. How could material objects be comprised of non-material particles? Wait, they hyperlinked quantum mechanics. Maybe they provide a link to peer-reviewed articles by actual physicists describing the uh, invisible, totally non-material world? 
Hopefully, it'll at least give us some reasoning for their mentioning quantum mechanics in the first place. Nope. It is the Wikipedia article about quantum mechanics. That sure clears things up. And over 95% of our universe consists of dark matter and energy that is beyond scientific observation. Ah, dark matter. This is just too tempting a straw for any creationist to avoid latching onto. Dark matter is so called because unlike conventional matter, it emits no detectable radiation. However, it is detectable by its gravitational influence. Oh, and by the way, dark matter does not make up 95% of our universe. Do your research. We do not yet have a full understanding of the nature of dark matter. However, our current lack of understanding in this subject in no way invalidates what we do currently know about the universe. And despite what creationists would have you believe, it also does nothing to cast doubt on any fields outside of cosmology. We're going to go through each of these planets and show that each one in a unique way disproves evolution. This is something I think is another major falsehood of creationism. If I can't see it, then it has not been proven to exist. As if direct visual observation was the be-all end-all of science. Concordance made a video recently that I think is very relevant to this topic. A link is in the sidebar. In it, he demonstrates that the opposite is true. Direct observation is extremely limited. Our assumptions or gut instincts are based on our superficial observations of a relatively small perspective existing on three linear spatial dimensions in constant time. When we look out the window, the Earth appears to be flat. When we watch stars change position, it looks like they are orbiting around us. Objects that are moving at different speeds appear to experience the same amount of time passing. Looking beyond our everyday scale reveals our natural assumptions to be incorrect. It turns out mathematics is a far better telescope or microscope that we have available. Math is the only science in which proofs and laws actually exist. With it, we are able to extrapolate beyond what we can see because we assume that the laws of physics don't magically change when our backs are turned. Or perhaps the Bible was not as wrong as we think it is. Maybe the Earth really was flat and at the center of the universe, and then one day it suddenly altered itself when people began making more careful observations of our solar system. These God of the Gaps arguments are one of the most infuriating. This attitude naturally leads to the argument, we do not understand everything, therefore we never will. So God friggin' done it. If everyone held this position, then we'd still be praying for rain, performing exorcists, and burning people with funny-shaped moles. Science leads you to killing people. Yeah. Good word, good word. So, in a big loud voice, who should you always trust first, God or the scientist? God. God, and I want you to remember that. The Bible is the most scientifically accurate book in the entire world.